What's up, my friends? Welcome back. John Levesque here. Man, it has been a minute since we have done a tutorial together, but I am happy to say that today we are marching on with the DocuSign 101 series to give you a, something a little bit in the middle. We talked about admin settings, we talked about templates, we talked about the various products. We have covered a lot of things, but one thing that's pretty important that we haven't covered is signing order. And so we'll talk about that today, but before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and bring on my guest because you know I have one. And so my friend Sophian is back with us. Sophian, how you doing, buddy? Hey, fantastic. Good to see you again, John. How are you? I'm doing excellent. I'm doing excellent. Uh, the, the summer is coming. It is on its way. The spring rain is almost done here in Seattle, and I, I couldn't be happier. I'm ready for some sunny, warm days so I can leave work and be outside and ignore all this technology stuff, man. <laughs> yeah. On to the, the item at hand today. Uh, Sofian runs a company called Solusign. Uh, he helps companies implement DocuSign and automation technology to help make their company smarter and run more efficient. And so, Sofian, why don't you go ahead and take a second, tell the folks a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go ahead and jump right in. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm basically an ex-DocuSign uh, trainer. So I used to work at DocuSign myself and help companies um, with DocuSign onboarding. And now for the past two years, I've been running my own uh, consulting practice. We basically help companies automate sales and customer onboarding workflows through automation and DocuSign being such a uh, fantastic, pr fantastic product just because it helps digitize um, all what, what wasn't possible, what wasn't possibly digitizable, if, if, that, if, if such a word exists yeah. before, because we still had that paper element. Yeah. You know what I mean? Definitely. So now that we've got DocuSign, most of those companies can actually automate most of the customer journey. And so this is what we're helping our customers um, with, uh, with DocuSign uh, as the core of, of, um, of the offering. So the, the core of the technology that we help clients implement. Beautiful. I need to introduce you to some people, man. I got uh, somebody reached out to me last week. We're asking me about facts. No. Facts, a uh, fax. I was like, wait, what? A fax? I'm like, okay, I gotta introduce you to some people. So I'm gonna I'm gonna connect you to after this. So so Sophie, sure. what are we talking about today, man? Yeah, so today we're gonna talk about something pretty simple, but that's very important to grasp if you're a DocuSign user. Um, the recipient roles, the signing order, and the most common mistakes that I see people make when it comes to using one of those two uh, features. So the different recipient roles that DocuSign allows um, a sender to assign to a recipient when sending an envelope or uh, falls in, they, they, they fall into three kind of main buckets. And there's more, but I'm actually talking about the main ones here. Okay. Um, so you'll have uh, receives a copy. Then we have signing recipients. So those recipients will need to sign somehow. And I'll explain, in a, uh, I'll explain in a sec why I'm saying somehow. And then we have the manager recipients. So those manager recipients aren't included in the workflow to act on the documents themselves, if that makes sense. Mm. So, so they don't need to, you know, you don't need to sign. They don't need to fill out any information. They're just in the workflow to um, help facilitate the workflow of the document, of the envelope. And Got it. that'll make more sense. That'll make more sense in a sec. Cool. Okay. So I'll jump on DocuSign now and show you um, those different kinds of uh, recipient actions. So okay. I'm just looking at an envelope now, or even template. It doesn't really matter. I'm actually in a in a template, but you would get the same signing actions whether you're sending an envelope from scratch or whether you're using a template to send your envelope. So the most, uh, the first most common recipient action and most of uh, our viewers today I'm sure will know uh, of is receives a copy. So when you add, when we add that recipient, when we assign that recipient action against a recipient by, you know, just adding their name and email, then that person is only going to be receiving a copy of the document. They're not going to be asked to do anything. Um, they'll just get a copy of the document and they'll either get a copy of the document at start when the when the envelope goes out or they get a copy of the document when the cop, when the document is completed so signed by all parties and i'll explain how you can make that you, how you can um, decide whether you want them to receive it at the beginning or at the end um, in a few minutes okay 
So that's the receipt, the copy. Then we have the signing recipients. So somehow, if we assign either needs to sign or in-person signer um, to a recipient, then that person is going to have to sign the fields that we assign to them. So if I click next here and I drag and drop a field on the document, then that person is going to need to act on that doc on that field, or is going to have to enter some kind of text in here, check out check a box, raise a button, or do any of the other of the of the other actions that you could possibly that you could possibly possibly take on a field. Nice. And okay. so so that's the risk, that's the uh, remote signing that needs to sign. Remote signing means that you're just sending the envelope to someone, they get an email, and they just sign. That's it. Then we have the needs to sign is like is your e sign right yeah that's, yeah okay. that's that's the bait I, I think I just made it sound more complicated than it needs to be it's just you just sign electronically okay that's cool it. Um, and then we've got the in person signer so with in person signer we need um, we're basically telling the software that um, that person needs to sign but that person is going to sign in the physical presence of the sender. Of the envelope so let's just say that a sales rep is um is, is prospecting clients and um at their home with his laptop just opens the laptop and he can facilitate the signing ceremony with his computer so the difference between in-person signer and needs to sign is that with the in-person signer you're not sending an email to the recipient because you're just sort of providing them your device for them to sign it could be uh -huh. an ipad could be a computer. So this is a good distinction. So in-person signer is still an electronic signature. It is just here I am turning the device to you to hit the button rather than me sending it to you in some form. That is correct. Okay, cool, exactly. cool, good to know, good to know. So now that we've ran through the signing uh, recipients, let's just uh, cover the managing uh, manager recipients. So we've got specify recipients allowed to edit and update recipients. So if we assign a specified recipient action to a recipient, we're basically allowing that recipient to provide contact information for the person who actually needs to sign. So for example, if you, um, if we needed um, a client to add their signature to a contract, but we weren't really sure whether the client is the CEO, the VP of sales, or I don't know, someone in marketing, you'd basically um, assign the specified recipient um, action to someone who would have that information. So that could be, I don't know, um, the, your, main, your main contact when you're trying to close that deal. And then that person would receive the envelope and would be prompted when they open the envelope to provide information for that recipient here. So in a sense here, we obviously need to send, we need to have the name and email of the person who is going to provide the details for the sign for the signer. But here we don't need to. So here I could just say, this is the signer and my envelope would still uh, go out. Okay. Okay. Got it. So it's almost like a delegated admin where I can allow someone else to decide who this is going to go to. Cause I don't know. I just know it needs to be signed. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Cool. Nice. And the person doesn't need to have a DocuSign account to um, to be a speci um, specifier, I guess. Um, it Very can be nice. anyone. Okay. After the specifier recipient, we have allowed to edit. So with allowed to edit, you're basically allowing the recipient who's been given that action to correct the envelope. So what does correct the envelope means? If you um, if 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 you or if you send an envelope and need to make some edits to the envelope, maybe you need to add a field. Maybe you need you need to add a document. Maybe you need to add some information to a field. And once you pressed send, your envelope's gone out. So you can still make those changes by correcting the envelope. So you're basically um, sort of recalling the envelope and you can make those edits as long as the first recipient hasn't signed or or or, or acted on the document in so, in so, in in some ways hmm. but that feature that capability is normally reserved to the person who sent the envelope because they own the envelope with allowed to edit um, you're basically giving permission 
to the person who has that signing action to correct the envelope on your behalf. So they could make any edits that they want on the recipient um, name or email or any of the fields or the documents. But that person needs to have a DocuSign account and they need to be set up as users of the DocuSign account. So this is a, an action that you would assign to someone who is part of your DocuSign uh, account. Got it. Okay. That is, I love the context you added there to, to say you have to have an account, you have to be added as a user. I think those specifications are very important for something like this because it can't just be anyone. Whereas the, the previous one, the specified recipient doesn't need an account, anyone. could literally be anyone. Okay, cool. That's cool. correct. So this is more sort of an internal um, uh, process, whereas specify could be used with any external uh, workflow. Awesome. And then finally, we've got update recipient. So with update recipient, um, again, the person who is assigned that signing action doesn't need to have a DocuSign account. It can be anyone. It's kind of the, um, it's a bit like the specify recipient, but with that one, um, the recipient is allowed, is able to update the name and email for all the subsequent recipients in the signing order. And we're going to talk, talk more about signing order in a sec, but basically anyone. So if let's just say that we have four different people signing this envelope, if um, the person who is assigned the um, update recipient is signing in position three, then they would be able to update all the following recipients' name and in, names and emails um, from there. So they but wouldn't be able to correct anything. Not okay. previous. Yes, okay. that, that's correct. Oh, this is um, fantastic. I love these little, This is these are such good nuggets to know that I that could trip people up. Yeah, those little nuances. I mean, DocuSign is so powerful that um, it, it can do so much. And unless you, you, you know, unless you start to know what you don't know, uh, you can remake really the most of it. So it's very important to, to learn um, all those kinds of um, nuances because they can really help you with a lot of use cases that you didn't know before you could streamline. I love that. I always have that goal. Turn what I know that I don't know into things that I know that I know. That's it. Did you, I mean, did that's you follow that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's right. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we said the same thing. I think we said. The yeah, same we thing. did. No, we totally did. We totally did. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So, so those are the main signing um, actions. There's also signs with notary, signs with witness. Um, not going to touch on those um, in this particular video. Maybe in a, in another one. And the last one um, that I actually forgot to talk about because it's so rarely used. I mean, I, I haven't really seen it being used with um, with any of my clients, actually, it's needs to view. So if you assign the needs to view action to a recipient, um, the recipient will need to open the envelope and confirm mm -hmm. that they viewed the envelope to for the, for the envelope to be, for the workflow to progress or for the envelope to complete. So it's different. If you compare this with receives a copy, this is a completely sort of passive action. It's you're just being CC'd in something. It's to view is you don't need to act on the document, but you do need to open the envelope. And mm. this this is going to be captured in the audit trail, of course, that someone's actually opened the document. It's fantastic. Thank you. I appreciate all these all this clarity on these. This is great. No worries. Um, so now that we've touched on the signing actions, um, we should talk about signing order. So why is signing order so important? Uh, basically, well, first, what is a signing order? So with a signing order, you can decide how, who is going to see the documents in what order. And it's two types of signing order. We've got the uh, sequential signing order and we've got parallel signing order. So by default, if you don't check that little box that's here, which is by it's a bit confusing because on my account, I've set the signing order by default, but in, in most accounts, by default, you don't have a signing order. Then you are, um, you're just being, you're just going, to, your recipients are going to, to receive the documents in parallel. Meaning that if you send an envelope to five people, they are all going to receive the document at the same time. Mm -hmm. But if you don't want that, and most of the time you don't, because if you have multiple people signing, you would want maybe a first person signing 
because you only want the second person to sign once the first person has signed, then yeah. you want to use a signing order. And that's what we call a sequential signing order. You know, I so, wonder why they would set it by default to be parallel when most things I think require sequential. And not a question for you, just a general no. thought I'm throwing out there. Something I should ask the team probably. Yeah, I think I think yeah. that's a question for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that one to the team. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'll follow up. Um, so yeah, so by default it's gonna be turned off. So you wanna make sure you check that box if you do want to to control who is going to sign and, and in what order. It's basically super simple. Um, you just, as you add more recipients in your list, um, then you want to use the numbers here to decide um, in what order people are going to receive the envelope. And so you could have two people signing at the same time. I mean, not technically at the same time, but they will be receiving the documents at the same time. So we could have, let's just say that you are um, doing business with, you're sending a contract to, you, or let's just take a loan, a loan agreement, for example. If you have uh, two, you have a couple signing, you don't want to, I don't know, to let the, the, the first partner sign in position one. And you don't, what I'm saying is you don't want to have, you don't want for the second partner to wait for the first partner to sign because right. you would delay the envelope, right? You would right. want them to be signing both at the same time. So in that case, you would want to have the uh, first partner and second partner signing in position one. But oh. you might want to have the, I don't know, the salesperson or the banker or whoever is issuing the loan sign counter signing in position two. So you can do a mix of parallel and sequential by playing with the numbers to the side. That's beautiful. That was actually going to be my question, actually, was can I insert a parallel step somewhere in a sequential action? And you just nailed it. So thank you. Awesome. OK, that's that's very cool. Uh, yeah. And funny enough, it happened to me recently because I was uh, I, I bought a house not that long ago and we did it all through DocuSign. And uh, there were those moments where it was all just to me and I had to sign first. And then there were those moments where it would show up for both of us. And I wondered, like, ah, I, wonder, I wonder how they're doing this. So that's OK. Great to know. Super easy, super easy yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so why is the signing order super important? It's important because, um, I mean, if you do set a signing order, it's important to think about the visibility of the field. I'll explain. So I've just set up Bob and Sam as two different recipients real quick. And I want to um, illustrate why the signing of the, the, the signing order is so important because what ha what happens is that it affects who will be able to see what. So if we assign a field to someone, and um, let's just say that we were to assign a field to, um, let's just say we had three recipients actually, I think it will make more sense. We have Bob and Sam and Kim. So if we don't add a signing order, Actually, if we just have everybody signing at the same time, Bob might only want to sign if Kim has signed. And so Bob might want to be able to see what Kim has filled out in the form before he adds his signature on the document. And if Bob is unfortunately actually signing, physically signing before Kim, is not going to be able to see Kim's fields. And that's why it's very important to always think about who will need to see what in the envelope. Otherwise, your recipients might not be able to complete their um, their their signing action. Right. And so like practically speaking, what that means is like if if Kim is signing a purchase order or or let's say if Bob is signing a purchase order, he wouldn't go and sign it before Kim filled out how much the invoice was right he needs that's, some that's information right. and so the signing order is very important because bob's going to be sitting there waiting and kim is going to be sitting there waiting too but they're out of order and so it'll never progress properly because the signing order was incorrect and the information that someone needed to make that decision wasn't flowing properly that's exactly right and so if you ever need to add a field for the first recipients but you don't want them to be able to touch the field but you do want them to see that information because otherwise they're not going to sign. What you can do is to just play with the read-only option. 
And so that's one of the most common mistakes that I see people make is they don't use that feature. But, tech, but realistically, if you did want Bob to add his signature and after he saw that, you know, the sales contract, the, the contract value was, I don't know, $8,000, for example, yeah. what you would do is you would assign the field to Bob, but you would make it read only so that he can see it and he can also sign. Got it. Got it. Nice. Okay. That makes sense. That's basically... Um, that's basically the, the the main settings you wanna you wanna look at. A last and one last thing is um, the ability to display the values that the document sender is entering in the field. So let me ex let me give an example. Sometimes you want to prefill the form so that your signers don't have to. Mm -hmm. And again, if you have multiple recipients in that form. Some fields will be assigned to uh, Bob, some field will be assigned to Sam, some field will be as assigned to Kim. But if you want all these people to be able to see the values that you've pre-filled for Bob, Sam, and Kim at the time they open the envelope, what you want to do is, well, the signing order is going to affect who sees what, because if they signed, if they're supposed to sign after someone else, they won't see that someone else's field. So what you want to do is you want to go to the sending settings and you want to turn on that checkbox here, which is, which is somewhere here. When an envelope is sent, write the initial value of the field for a recipient. So if you check that box, everybody is going to see the values that's entered in the field, even if they're supposed to be signing after, um, after or before. Uh, some recipients does that make sense that does yeah so basically this way it doesn't matter what the signing order is everybody's going to get to see all the information as soon as they correct. open it even if they are not the person who's supposed to sign yet that is correct exactly cool. right okay nice awesome man this is so great this is super helpful stuff it's i feel like only someone who has worked with the tools and discovered the nuances of it could could really help share this. So I think this is a, a massive help for people who are just getting started. This is a massive help for people who have probably struggled with why can I not see the right data at the right time? And so awesome stuff, man, really awesome stuff. No, welcome. I, I, I've learned it by failing many, 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 many times. And then I, so yeah, I, I, I'm hoping that this is going to save um, some time to anyone who's uh, trying to do something with this, playing with a signing order. Definitely. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, man, this has been great. Sofian, I want to say thank you so much for coming on and sharing with the audience again. It's a pleasure to have you here. Do me a thank favor. You. Go ahead and go back to your QR code slide real quick there oh. for me. Uh, I just want to say to you guys out there watching, uh, if you want to talk to Sofian, if you want to work with Sofian, he does this every day. He can help you get your signing order and more worked out. Go ahead, scan his QR code there, get in touch with him, say hello, to let him know you saw him on my video here so that he'll come back and hang out with me again. Uh, but other than that, Sofian, really appreciate you being here, taking the time to share with the audience, man. It means a lot. Thank you, John. Awesome. All right, my friends at home, that's it. You know what to do. Go ahead, click like get subscribed, reach out to Sofian. Much love from me. See you in the next one.